Dear friends, welcome to Dental Education Hub YouTube channel. Today we are going to study a new topic that is dry mouth. So what we are going to cover in this session? So we are going to cover the background information related to dry mouth, the clinical features uh, that are associated with dry mouth, the causes and the complications of dry mouth, and the diagnosis, which is a very important part. And we will cover the management and remedies for patients with dry mouth. So watch this lecture till the end and don't forget to give your feedback in the comments. The dry mouth is also known as xerostomia. So it is among the most common salivary problem. And it is estimated that the dry mouth can affect as many as one in four patients at some point of their life, which makes the daily function difficult for the patients, such as swallowing and speaking. So what are the clinical features of dry mouth? In dry mouth, there is dryness of the oral tissue, oral tissues and soreness, for example, on the surface of the tongue, there's a formation of fissures and this is complete dryness of the tongue. There's loss of protective function. Uh, that is because of the presence of saliva. So when the saliva is saliva secretion is reduced, the protective function is lost. The oral mucosa or the oral cavity is more prone to infections by the microbes. The functions, for example, speaking, mastication, and swallowing, it become difficult. There's difficulties in controlling dentures. Besides saliva, various factors that help in the retention of dentures and saliva is one of them. A layer of fluid is present between the mucosa and the denture and that help in the retention. So what are the causes of dry mouth or the etiological factors that are associated with dry mouth? So the most common etiological factor is, are the drugs or medications. And there are numerous drugs that can cause dry mouth. Some of the examples are tricyclic antidepressant drugs, antihistamines uh, that are used for, uh, the treat, for treating allergies, antihypertensive drugs that are used to control the blood pressure. Beside this, the radiation therapy, uh, that is used for uh, treating head and neck cancers. Uh, it can cause damage to the salivary glands that may result in the reduced salivary flow. Besides this, there are systemic diseases and syndromes that can cause dry mouth, such as diabetes, HIV, Sjogren's syndrome. Uh, so these are the few examples that can cause dry mouth among the systemic disease and syndromes. Dehydration, either because of the high temperature or because of the side effect of a drug such as diuretics, can also cause dry mouth. There are some psychogenic uh, factors as well. For example, during a period of depression or anxiety, there is dry mouth as well. The physiological change can also cause dry mouth. For example, uh, during pregnancy, there may be a dry mouth as well due to the increased requirement of fluids. Now, what are the complications uh, that are associated or that can be seen in the patients with dry mouth? The patients with dry mouth, they commonly suffer with the fungal infections and among the fungal infections, the most common fungus that infect the oral cavity is Candida albicans. Sometimes there's an infection of the salivary glands, infection and inflammation of the salivary glands during reduced flow of saliva. And we call it as ascending salaginitis, meaning the infection, it is spread from the duct towards the, parenchyma, towards the cells and the parenchyma of the gland. There is halitosis or bad breath because the, the residual uh, food, it is not cleared and there is more growth of bacteria and other microbes. 
The patients uh, with dry mouth, they are more prone to dental caries because the protective effect of saliva, it is lost. So how to diagnose uh, the dry mouth? So the diagnosis of dry mouth is important and most of the time the diagnosis is based on history and examination of the patient. Sometimes other specialized investigations, they are required. And in this lecture, I'm going to discuss only few investigations only. So salivary flow rate, also known as salometry. So in a normal person, usually the flow, stimulated flow of saliva is 0.1 ml per minute. So in salometry, we ask the patient to spit into a, into a small cylinder with measurements. There are sometimes the eye tests, they are performed and the salivary gland biopsy is performed to check whether there's a syndrome, for example, Sjogren syndrome, or whether there is a, in which the eye and the glands, they are equally affected. Uh, beside this, the salivary gland biopsy is also performed to check any neoplasia or any cancer that, that is affecting salivary gland function. The management of dry mouth. So as you know, there are numerous causes of dry mouth. For example, it may be due to the medication. It may be due to a, a physiological state, for, for example, pregnancy. It may be due to, uh, due to some syndromes, for example, Sjogren syndrome. It may be due to diabetes. So there are numerous causes of dry mouth. So there's no single management of protocol for dry mouth. I, I hope you have heard that one size does not fit all. The management is, is according to the cause. But here, uh, I'll just discuss a general management of a patient with dry mouth. Drugs that produce xerostomia, they should be avoided or some alternative drugs should be used in these patients with consultation of their general medical practitioner. The alcohol and tobacco consumption uh, also produce uh, also causes dry mouth, and they are these the alcohol and tobacco they are also injurious to health as well. So they should be completely avoided. Chewing gums uh, they stimulate the salivary flow, but uh, the chewing gums uh, that contain sorbitol should be used and not sucrose because otherwise it will cause more caries. The cholinergic drugs, um, they stimulate the salivation, and these drugs, they are also known as salogogs. Uh, and one of, this, uh, uh, one of that drug is pilocarpine. But these drugs are only effective when uh, salivary gland cells and the connective tissue, they are intact. For example, if the salivary gland is absent at birth, for example, aplasia, or if the salivary glands tissues, they are damaged because of radiation therapy. So the pilocarpine will not be effective in, in these cases. Salivary substitutes or artificial saliva, they are effective, but the proteins, they are not equivalent to the natural saliva because these proteins, they are artificial proteins uh, that are taken from an animal or of plant origin. In, these, in the patients with dry mouth, mild toothpastes, they should be used and alcohol-free mouthwashes, they should be prescribed. There are some remedies uh, along with the management. These remedies are also effective for dry mouth patients. For example, the dry food should be avoided. Uh, water can be saved throughout the day in small quantities. Uh, protect the lip with the petroleum jelly, uh, for example, Vaseline. Avoid hot environment. And avoid caffeine uh, because the caffeine, it has a, the diuretic effect, mean it stimulates the urine formation and the over-the-counter antihistamines that are used for common cold or allergies, they should be avoided.
So this is all about uh, dry mouth osteostomia. Don't forget to give me your feedback in the comments and stay blessed. Thank you.